Buenos dias. It's truly an honor and a privilege to be here this morning on this beautiful, brisk day in Reading, PA. It is with great pleasure and enthusiasm that I stand before you to welcome you to this significant event hosted by the Pennsylvania Department of Conservation and Natural Resources. I extend my heartfelt gratitude to DCNR for their continued support and dedication to enhancing the quality of lives in our communities. Today we gather to celebrate the announcement of a remarkable initiative, a generous $4 million in grant opportunities for planting trees in underserved community throughout the Community Conservation Partnership Program in Pennsylvania. Trees play a vital role in fostering a healthy and vibrant environment. And this initiative will contribute to the well-being of our residents. As we stand here in this beautiful Schwegel Park, please take it all in, I am reminded of the transformative power of green spaces, which is very special to me. I am delighted to share that over the years we have been fortunate recipient of four grants totaling just under $1 million. These grants have played a crucial role in the transformation of our green spaces here in Reading. From the third and spruce playground and rec center to the upcoming Reading skate park located in South 6 and Canal Street. We express our sincere gratitude to DCNR for their continued partnership and dedication to our city. Sincerely thanks on behalf of 95,000 plus residents. The importance of trees and recreation to the health and well-being of all cannot be overstated. Trees provide shade, improve our quality of life, quality of air, and create a sense of tranquility in our city. They are essential for our physical and mental health. And this initiative ensures that more of our residents, especially in underserved areas, can enjoy these benefits. Parks and recreation centers serve as gathering spaces, fostering social connections and community spirit. They promote an active lifestyle, contributing to the overall health of our residents. In fact, why it's so important to me and so special, these initiatives, because it reminds me, going back 20 years ago, as I lived in New York City with my wife, we were at a park not far from our home. And as you know, New York City, that doesn't come across very close to each other. And I remember a conversation with my wife who says, would it be nice for us to relocate to an area where we can enjoy this beautiful scenery that we have right here in this park today? Move forward, we found Reading, and I'm grateful for that. It is a great pride that I share. Reading, PA is recognized as one of the Tree Cities USA. This esteemed title reflects our commitment to preserving and expanding our urban, urban forests. Today, I'm honored to introduce a key figure behind this transformative initiative, Secretary Cindy Adam Dunn of the Pennsylvania Department of Conservation and Natural Resources. Her efforts and vision have paved the way for these grants, and I'm so excited for the positive impact they will have in our community. So thank you, and without ado, I invite Secretary Dunn to share more about this remarkable endeavor. Well, Mayor, let me say this. I mean, we are so fortunate, Reading so fortunate, Pennsylvania is so fortunate that we were able to attract you from New York. It was our gain, and uh, we have seen that gain. I was uh, fortunate to be with you one of your first weeks on the job in a city park in downtown Reading, and we knew right then that we had an ally in, in really bringing back the urban areas through green infrastructure, through commitment that, that DCNR can make to assist these communities, and we're happy to be back here today. Really appreciate your kind introduction. I really want to call out and thank uh, some of the future speakers we'll have here. Senator Judy Schwenk, who's been a longtime ally and advisor for DCNR, not only in Reading, but in this entire landscape. 
one of my go-to people uh, for statewide issues and for local issues and advising and directing DCNR. So that partnership with uh, Senator Swank is uh, deep and meaningful to me. And Representative Guzman, who is an ally for DCNR, and we recognize that from the very first day I met him, and I was just, you know, it made my heart warm to find out that as a young person, he went to Nolde Environmental Ed Center and learned about forests and trees and birds. And so Representative Guzman's uh, early exposure to nature and his commitment uh, to his, his district and his community and the understanding of how DCNR, nature, trees, parks, trails can assist his community is really helping us. And, it's, and he's landed a seat on the House Appropriations Committee. So uh, having a Representative Guzman and the key legislative body in Harrisburg as an advocate for this work will not only help his district, but it will rise uh, up communities across the Commonwealth because of his, his voice there to explain the importance and need of this. And we sat at a budget hearing together this week, a very long three and a half hour budget hearing. And uh, we heard from communities, we heard from legislators who really want to bring green infrastructure, trees, parks, trails, and equity into their community through what um, DCNR has to offer. The great news is Governor Josh Shapiro understands that very well himself. His budget for DCNR includes $5 million for the Pennsylvania Outdoor Corps. These are youth corps that are working across our public lands and gaining work skills in the environment on everything from tree planting and invasive species to building trails to improving parks. He included $8.5 million in additional funding for trails in our forests. And these trails provide young people, like Representative Guzman was, a, a natural experience in the outdoors to uh, experience and, and, and love the outdoors and then thereby take care of it. So this budget cycle is really good for us and it's good timing to be here just uh, so shortly after seeing Representative Guzman at the budget hearing. But I'm very excited to be in Reading today and with all of our friends. I want to point out, you know, Kim Murphy, longtime friend and ally here with Burke's Nature, sitting there in the back with Lauren Possinger. Uh, Mayor Moran mentioned the grants. Lauren's, Lauren's your guy on, on the grants in this whole region and has been a longtime advocate for this landscape in this area and can really help assist on, on the grant side. And of course, we're here with a number of folks from our Bureau of Forestry. You'll be meeting Orshi. I'll be introducing Orshi as I'm, I'm finished. But um, this, this collaboration between forestry and the Bureau of Rec and Con and grants and trees has been really phenomenal. But we're here today because of a federal infusion from the Biden administration, four million to DCNR. They'll be available specifically to underserved communities for tree planting. Now we've heard too long about this need. They've been overlooked and underinvested in, and the science and data show that again and again. These communities, these communities have been underinvested. And the people who live in these places are burdened by the effects of pollution, burdened by extra heat, burdened by lower property values and the many, many negative effects of not having a green community. But the Superior Administration, through its work with DEP, DCNR, Department of Community Economic Development, and all of the agencies are really looking for ways to assist these communities to thrive. The trees, uh, you know, we talk about, and the mayor mentioned the many, many benefits of trees. I'll mention a few more. Clean air. They help us breathe. Uh, air pollution is a leading cause of premature death. It has health impacts. Trees filter and clean the air. They capture carbon. They help blunt the impacts of a changing climate. They help cool the city streets. A lot of people think that, you know, when they think about weather events that kill people, they think about hurricanes, tornadoes, and they certainly are, can be deadly. But the, the number one weather-related deadly effect is, is urban heat, summertime heat. When a heat dome settles over an urban community and that concrete just holds the heat, magnifies the heat. One study in Philadelphia showed the neighborhoods that were densely concrete with no trees were 22 degrees hotter than communities with tree-lined streets. And so this can save lives. Trees can save lives in the, in, a, in the denser parts of an urban community. So shading and cleaning the air. They prevent destructive flooding. They absorb floodwaters, blunt the impacts of these uh, climate-driven deluges of, of, of water. 
Um, they reduce stress and lower people's blood pressure. I think we all know, you know, we're happier around trees. I mean, you just, you can feel it. Um, trees make people healthier and they make the urban cities, the, the cities and the communities uh, more beautiful. Trees beautify the landscape and they raise property values. You know, houses on a street with trees have higher value than those without. So that's another benefit to trees, especially in an urban community. So we're obviously very excited to be here to announce this grant for Reading and the other communities. And we think it'll be transformative in helping to improve people's lives. So now I'll be turning us over to Orshi Lazar, DCNR's phenomenal community tree specialist to tell you more about the impact the funding will have specifically here in the Reading area. Orshi? Thank you, Secretary Dunn. I'm uh, happy to be here and share more about uh, our DCNR Urban and Community Forestry Program. A tree in a nearby yard or a park can create long time fond memories. But we all know that trees are much more than just decoration. In addition to all the many benefits that uh, Secretary uh, listed, they also support local economy and they foster social uh, connections. Uh, DC, uh, trees, community forestry is really about people. Uh, DC Nars Urban and Community Forestry Program uh, is uh, supporting uh, tree canopy improvements in places where people work, live, and play. We provide funding and technical assistance to improve tree canopy in uh, underserved areas and anywhere where public or publicly accessible places. Our program received $9.75 million from the Inflation Reduction Act uh, to support specifically tree canopy improvement in underserved areas. As the uh, Secretary mentioned, $4 million of this funding will be used in the C2P2 grant program, and uh, there is no match requirement for this. There's also some state funding for applicants that are outside environmental justice areas and they will require to provide a 20% fund uh, matching for those. In addition to tree plantings, this grant can pay for other activities that will improve long-term tree canopy, um, uh, such as tree inventories, management plans, hazardous tree mitigation, and even urban wood utilization. Increased funding in environmental causes has raised the demand for plant material and professionals that can grow, plant, and care for those plants. Our uh, DCNR uh, grant can be used for workforce development and youth um, employment progr programming. We also will use some of the funding uh, to create a new position that will coordinate statewide workforce development efforts. To increase capacity to care for trees, we also encourage communities uh, to engage their, their residents and uh, increase awareness and knowledge about trees. Some of the communities won't be able to apply for our grants either because of lack of capacity or because of the requirement for the $50,000 minimum uh, project size. To support communities more equitably, we will be utilizing the direct contracting process that is used in other parts of the uh, state uh, for other state programs. This means that businesses, many of them small, <coughs> can get pre-qualified through the Commonwealth and then DCNR will be able to contract with them to implement projects in underserved areas. Communities may also take advantage of our and our partners' technical assistance we can help with selecting appropriate tree species, review municipal code, uh, train staff or volunteers, or connect with other state programs. For contact information, please visit DCNR's Urban and Community Forestry website. Our community forestry team is growing and we're really eager to work with new communities and new places to help provide uh, tree benefits in a more sustainable way throughout Pennsylvania. Thank you. And I would like to introduce Margarita Casado, Ambassador for Pennsylvania's Parks and Forest Foundation. Thank you. 
Buenos días. Mi nombre es Margarita Caicedo y estoy aquí en representación de la Fundación de Parques y Borques de Pensilvania. Estoy muy feliz de estar acá, especialmente para hablar de algo tan importante como es el programa de silvicultura urbana del DICIENAR. Silvicultura, esa palabrita está como rara, so, pero es la correcta y nosotros, para entendernos mejor, vamos a hablar de la forestación urbana. Este programa se ocupa del cultivo y la gestión de los árboles en las ciudades. Su objetivo es aprovechar el potencial de los árboles para mejorar el bienestar de la población urbana, tanto desde el punto de vista fisiológico, psicológico, sociológico y económico. Todos desarrollamos conexiones emocionales con los árboles. Todos nos sentimos felices cuando hay árboles, como el árbol en el parque o el del patio de la casa. Podemos crear recuerdos que nos van a durar para toda la vida. Pero los árboles también son importantísimos para nuestra salud y nuestro bienestar. Como lo decía la secretaria Dan, juegan un papel muy, muy importante, sobre todo en las ciudades. El programa forestal urbano y, comun y comunitario del DICENAR apoya las mejoras del tendido de árboles donde todas las personas vivimos, trabajamos, jugamos, nos recreamos. El programa proporciona financiamiento y asistencia técnica para una mejor gestión del arbolado público. El programa recibió 9.75 millones de la Ley de Reducción de la Inflación para apoyar el trabajo del tendido de árboles en comunidades desfavorecidas. Cuatro de esos millones de dólares están disponibles a través de la subvención del Programa de Asociación para la Conservación Comunitaria. Esto no necesita contrapartida. Habrán otras uh, comunidades que tal vez no son elegibles y van a necesitar una contrapartida de solamente 20%. Además de la plantación de árboles, esta subvención puede pagar otras actividades que van a resultar en mejoras a largo plazo en el dosel, como el inventario de árboles, planes de manejo, mitigación de árboles peligrosos y el uso de madera procedente de la remoción de árboles urbanos. El aumento de la financiación para causas del medio ambiente ha aumentado la demanda de materiales vegetales y la necesidad de profesionales que puedan plantar y cuidar de estos sembrados. Algunos de los fondos que se recibieron se utilizaron para crear una nueva posición que va a coordinar los esfuerzos de desarrollo de la fuerza laboral en todo el estado. La subvención puede pagar proyectos juveniles, eh, incrementar el desarrollo de la fuerza laboral para impulsar nuestra economía verde. Para aumentar la capacidad de cuidado de los árboles, también alentamos si podemos pagar por la participación de la comunidad y ofrecer capacitación si se solicita. Ah, para hacerlo mejor y más accesible, los proveedores de servicios pre precalificados pueden contratar con el Estado directamente para implementar proyectos comun comunitarios forestales en áreas desventajadas. Las comunidades también pueden aprovechar la asistencia técnica del equipo y de sus socios. Se puede ayudar a seleccionar las especies de los árboles adecuadas revisar los códigos municipales, capacitar al personal y a los voluntarios o proporcionar alguna otra asistencia que sea necesaria. Este equipo está creciendo y esperamos trabajar en más lugares, llegar a muchísimos más lugares a proporcionar los beneficios de tener más árboles y de una, más equi de una manera más equitativa en todo Pensilvania. Gracias.
Good morning. Thank you, everybody, for being here today. Um, hey, it's almost spring. It's a little chilly, but it's March 1st, people. And you'll notice some newly planted trees behind me. I think they were anyway. If the ground's not frozen, you can plant. They won't start growing yet, but just to inspire us. That's what we're, here, we're all about today. I'd like to, first of all, acknowledge some in, very important people here. And just Secretary, again, welcome. Just to get you the, to know the fact that almost all of our city council is here because they really believe this is something that's important. Let me start by introducing, I'll just go right over across the line, Chris Miller, city councilman, Donna Reed, president of council, uh, Melissa Ventura, who is also a councilwoman, and Jamie Baez, who is also a councilman, and even our city, city auditor is here, Maria Rodriguez. So very glad to see all of you. And someone that I really want to point out, just to emphasize how important this is to this community, our new public works director, Kyle Zeever. It's my old friend. <laughs> Kyle got his start as the city horticulturist. What does that tell you about the culture and what green spaces mean to us in this community? An awful lot. So kudos to all of you for being here today. I appreciate it. I'm a horticulturist by training and trade. That's where I got my start. So being here today is really, really special to me. And I wanna situate you and put this in context here. This is of course a city park that is, if you look around, you see a ball field. That ball field is used a lot. I think my husband played fast pitch softball on that particular field. There's a playground over there. And there's also a swimming pool, one of the few in the city. So it is an important recreational space. And it's also on the edge of something we call the 18th Wonder. The 18th Wonder Improvement District, which is an area, it's like we're creating a landscape where we're trying to connect people to places where they need to shop, like the shopping center over there, to other businesses, connecting people to trails, to the park. And of course, um, one of our housing projects is, is behind us as well, the Oak Brook Housing Project. So while it, you feel like you're in a, almost in a country setting, except for the occasional sound of the traffic from the bypass, you're really in, you're in the city. You really are, and, and this, you can tell, is something that we value in our community. So Secretary Dunn, to you and your team, this is a really good idea, because certainly our, par our cities and even the small ones that will need some assistance in helping even to apply for this, all of us can create, all of them want to create those kinds of spaces for their residents so that they can feel connected to nature as well. You know, as, as I'm standing here, I'm also thinking too, notice those newly planted trees. They have uh, plastic tubes on them. Those are tree guards. I'm sorry, I have to give you a horticulture lesson here. Part, part of this, which is important for the funding is for maintenance. It's great to plant, but we've got to ensure that we take care of these trees, that we continue to monitor their health and make sure that we prune and replace things as we need to. That's part of what this grant will help us to do. And as many of you will know, on some of our city streets, we could use that kind of funding to be able to continue to maintain those green spaces wherever ever we are. As human beings, we crave nature. We crave those green spaces. But what we have to do for all of us and for our residents is to create those spaces where we live, not just a place to go to, but in the very center of our lives. And that's part of what I think this grant will do throughout the Commonwealth. I'm excited, if you can't tell. I think this will, um, this is, is really going, it's a focus that I don't know that we've ever done before in terms of all of the grants and um, different loan programs that are available to our communities. This specific focus on our urban areas, I think is a very positive thing. So thank you very, very much for your attention. You started in a great place by being here today. And now I get the honor of introducing my partner here in serving the city. Representative Manny Guzman. Manny? 
Good morning, everybody. Listen, I don't want to take a lot of time up because obviously you all have heard about the great uh, program that DCNR through President Biden and through Governor Shapiro investing in places like the city of Reading. I do want to point out, though, to all the folks watching at home, you know, just in the last two days, we had Governor Shapiro here yesterday. We have Secretary Dunn here today. And I hope that this is proof positive, not just to the mayor, but to the people at home about the advocacy that we're doing, not just myself, but Senator Schwenk and Representative Cepeda Freites fighting for the city of Reading. And I think finally that advocacy is starting to pay due, Mayor, and uh, I'm very happy to see that. Listen, this is a place in Slagle Park that has a lot of great memories for me. As the Senator said, you know, uh, play baseball here, swim in the, swim in the pool there, play basketball in, in the park there as well. Uh, a lot of great memories in this park. Uh, I remember though when I first moved to Reading, uh, we moved and we moved into South 6th Street and that was one of those areas that once we moved in, uh, all the trees got cut down on the block. And I remember growing up on South 6th Street and going to Tyson Shaner and wondering why our block was so hot compared to all the other blocks around, uh, or, or around the radius. And it wasn't until I was older that I realized the importance of trees and the importance of that shade and, and not just for quality of life, but also for bringing down the temperature in urban areas like South 6th Street and across places of the city of Reading. And so it's these initiatives, not just planting trees here in Slagle Park, but I wanna make sure that we plant trees all across the blocks in the city of Reading that are missing trees, that need that quality of life, that need that shade to not only just bring the temperature down, right, but also increase the quality of life for you, your neighbors, your friends, and your family. So mi gente watching at home and here today, I just want you all to know that we are thankful for the governor's uh, commitment to the city of Reading to programs like these. And I promise you that this is not the end of this investment. We're going for a lot more. Thank you very much, y'all. Thank you to all our speakers. Do we have any questions out there today? Sure. <laughs> Hearing none, we'll break. Uh, thank you. We'll have some one-on-one -on -one media availability and some opportunity for photos. Thanks for coming out today.